like your skirt. Thanks, I like your shoe. Thanks, I made it from a tutorial I found online. Comic Cat Creations? Comic Cat Creations! Monica here and welcome back to my channel. So recently I've had requests for more lace projects and specifically I had a request for a lace high-low skirt tutorial. So I came up with this high-low skirt where you can either use a sheer fabric over the lining like I do in this outfit or you can use a lace fabric over the lining like I do in the other outfit I'll be wearing in this introduction. So you can come up with two really different looks using the same tutorial and I think it just creates such a pretty fun flowy and girly skirt. So I really hope y'all enjoy this tutorial and if you haven't already I'd really appreciate if you subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on any more videos. And let's get into the tutorial. You'll need two yards of a lightweight, flowy, stretch knit fabric for the outer high-low portion of the skirt, and I used a sheer stretch fabric in the tutorial and a stretch lace fabric for the second skirt I showed you. You'll also want one and a half yards of a solid stretch knit for the lining, and I used black in this video and blue for the lace skirt. Now I do want to warn you that the sheer knit I used was so incredibly delicate, it got runs in it when I stretched the edge, which I didn't see on my skirt until I was part way through, so try to get something that's not quite as delicate so you don't wind up with holes in your skirt. You'll also need thick elastic for your waistband and some paper to make your patterns, and I used wrapping paper like I've seen other people make patterns with. To make the high-low skirt pattern, take your waist measurement where you want the skirt to sit. Mine is 34 inches. Divide your number by 3.14 and the number you get is what we'll use in a moment. I got 10.8. Place your tape measure at the corner of your paper and measure out and make a mark at the number you just calculated. Then swivel your tape measure from the corner and continue measuring and marking that number so you create a quarter circle shape, which you'll connect with a curved line. Now measure a half inch closer into the corner of your paper and make more marks along the curved line to create a half inch seam allowance. Connect the marks and cut along this line and you've created the waist of your pattern. Go to one of the straight edges of your paper that connects to the curve of the waist and decide how long you want the front part of your high-low skirt to be, which will be the high side, and add an inch to that number for hem and seam allowance. I wanted my front high side to be 19 and a half inches long, so I added an inch to get 20 and a half inches. Measure along that straight edge and make a mark at the number you came up with. So I've made my mark at 20 and a half inches and write on the pattern that this is the front high side of the skirt so you remember. Now go to the other straight edge that connects to the curve on your paper and decide how long you want the back low side of your skirt to be and add an inch to that number. I wanted my back length to be 32 inches so adding an inch I got 33 inches. Again, measure along this straight edge and make a mark at your number, and then write that this is the back low side of your skirt, and you've gotten through the worst of the math at this point. I've shifted the pattern to fit on camera better, and now that you've got your high side and low side marked on the paper, you'll just want to connect the two with a big sweeping curve. And since we already added that extra inch to the lengths before, we don't need to add hem allowance now, so go ahead and cut along the line to create the bottom edge of the high-low pattern. It should look something like this, and it's basically a half circle skirt pattern with one edge much longer than the other. Fold your outer sheer or lace fabric in half and smooth it out, making sure that the corner is a right angle, and lay your pattern down so that the front high side of the pattern is on the part of the fabric that has two layers on top of each other, and the back low side is on the folded edge of the fabric. Pin it into place and cut along both of the curves, and when you remove the pattern and unfold your fabric, you'll have your outer high-low skirt cut out, which will look similar to this. Fold the skirt in half with correct sides facing together and pin and sew along the straight edge using a ballpoint needle and a half inch seam allowance and always remember to backstitch to secure your seams. I sewed with a small straight stitch because it's a front seam that won't need to stretch at all and it worked best with this delicate fabric. Then trim down your seam allowance to a little less than a quarter inch so it won't be very visible through the sheer fabric. Now we'll hem the bottom edge of the high-low skirt, so lay it wrong side up and fold the bottom edge over toward the wrong side of your fabric about a quarter of an inch. Then fold it again another quarter inch and pin it down. 
Continue double folding and pinning for several inches, and you can pin the whole hem down first, but to save time I like to take a smaller section to the sewing machine to begin sewing it down, and I used a straight stitch again. Once you get to the unpinned part of the fabric, you'll just want to double fold a couple of inches of the fabric and smooth it out, then sew it down. Then fold a bit more and sew, getting into a rhythm until the whole hem has been sewn down and you have a neatly finished bottom edge. It's time to make our lining pattern, which is an easy quarter circle skirt, so divide your waist measurement by 1.57 this time. My 34 inch waist divided by 1.57 is 21.6. Using another piece of paper, measure and mark the number you calculated at the top edge, then swivel the tape measure and make more marks to create a quarter circle just like you did for the first pattern, although this quarter circle is actually much larger. Connect the lines, add a half inch seam allowance just like before, and cut out the waist. Next, decide how long you want your lining to be and add an inch to that number. I wanted mine to be 17 inches long, so with an inch added, I got 18 inches. And make sure that your lining is shorter than the front of your high-low skirt. Starting from the curve of the waist, measure along that straight edge and make a mark on your pattern at the number you came up with. Then move the tape measure along the curve and make more marks at that same number every so often to create the bottom edge. Connect the lines and cut out your pattern, and it should look like this. Lay your fabric onto your table in one layer so you don't need to fold it at all, and place your pattern on top so that the straight edges of the pattern line up with the straight edges of the fabric. Then pin it and cut along the curves. When you remove the pattern, your lining should look something like this. Fold this in half with the correct sides facing together and pin and sew along the straight edge. And since the lining fabric is not delicate and it'll be stretched more than the outer fabric, you'll want to sew with either a stretch stitch or zigzag stitch so that your seams will stretch with the fabric. Hem the bottom edge of the lining by turning it inside out and double folding and pinning just as you did earlier. And I pinned the whole bottom edge first this time because it didn't take long. Sew the hem down with a stretch or zigzag stitch. Wrap your elastic waistband around your waist, stretching it slightly, and pin it in place to make sure it fits comfortably. When you unpin it, add about a half inch extra for seam allowance and use a pin to mark this point. Cut the elastic to this size and then lay the two ends together with correct sides facing together and sew back and forth several times to secure them. Then you'll want to open up and flatten out the seam allowance and sew a line of stitches on either side of the center seam to keep those flaps flattened. Lay out your lining so that the seam is in the center back of the skirt, meaning that this point on top of it on the front will become the center front of the skirt and you'll want to use a pin to mark this point. Grab your outer skirt and lay it so that the seam is in the center front and the point directly behind it will be the center back, so mark it with a pin too. With both your outer skirt and your lining facing right side out, slide the lining in through the skirt so that the waists line up. Match up the center front seam of the outer skirt to that center front pin on the lining skirt and pin them together. Then match up the center back seam of the lining to that center back pin on the outer skirt and pin them together too. Place a few more pins around the waist to keep the pieces joined before grabbing your waistband. Lay the waistband with the seam positioned at the center back, then place a pin on the piece in front to mark the center front. And make sure the waistband is turned inside out so the neat side of the seam is facing inward. Wrap the band around the skirt waist and match up the center back of your skirt and lining to the center back seam of your waistband and pin them together. Then line up the center front pin on the waistband to the center front of your skirts and pin them together too. Place several more pins in smaller increments around the entire waist and sew to attach the pieces together. Use your presser foot as a guide along the edge of the elastic and sew with a stretch stitch or zigzag stitch. And once you've finished sewing, flip the elastic waistband up and you're all done with the high-low skirt. Let me know in the comments which skirt is your favorite. And thanks for watching and have a great day. Want to be high top? <laughs> this is my signature walk. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do it. No!